All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over-the-top beautiful postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this unbelievably gorgeous I think we're now up to Thursday August 5th 2021 where we might actually hit 80 degrees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes and uh I need to go over there to that garden and see if I actually have the first ripe tomato of the year. It has been so cold and rainy this summer that, uh, you know, the gardens are all kind of sluggish. But hopefully today is the day of the first BLT. But before I uh, head out into this unbelievably gorgeous day, to uh, enjoy it while I still can do what I do every day and that is uh, check in with the collapse of the planet and I want to thank uh, my alert lieutenant brother JJ for sending me this article from the Washington Post I think that brother JJ is over in Amsterdam but even though he's over in Amsterdam still doing his work tracking the apocalypse and so uh, the good old Washington Post sounding more and more like collapse chronicles wow you will not believe this but you heard it right here from the Washington Post those uh, <coughs> doomers up there at the Washington Post take it away Scientists expected falling wetlands in Siberia's permafrost. What they found is, quote, much more dangerous. So this is the Washington Post talking about that the exploding methane bomb firing off in the Arctic is actually much worse than previously thought. <clears throat> yes, D, thanks, so. Uh, a 2020 heat wave. You know, this heat wave last summer, as far as I know, the heat wave this summer is much worse than the heat wave last summer. They're talking about last summer's <coughs> heat wave unleashed methane emissions from prehistoric limestone in two regions stretching 375 miles across the Arctic. Okay, so not only is uh, methane blowing in wetlands, it's now just, it's so hot in the Arctic that limestone is uh, burping methane. Take it away and explain this to us. <clears throat> Scientists have long been worried about what many call the methane bomb, the potentially catastrophic release of methane from thawing wetlands in Siberia's permafrost. But now a study by three geologists says that a heat wave in 2020 has revealed a surge in methane emissions, quote, potentially in much higher amounts. Yes, from a different source, Falling rock formations in the Arctic permafrost. You know, th th it just never ends, guys. Uh, the difference is <clears throat> that thawing wetlands release microbial methane from the decay of soil and organic matter, while thawing limestone or carbonate rock release hydrocarbons and gas hydrates from reservoirs both below and within the permafrost, making it, quote, much more dangerous, close quote, than past studies have suggested. Do you think so? We have the methane bomb being much worse than previously thought. Nicholas Frotzheim, who teaches at the Institute of Geoscience at the University of Bonn, said that he and two colleagues used satellite 
maps that measured intense methane concentrations over two conspicuous elongated areas of limestone. Strips of rock that were several miles wide and up to 375 miles long in the Tamir Peninsula in the area around northern Siberia. The study was published by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So if you go on the link to the story, which I'll give you, you can link over, you know, to the actual study with all of the big 50 cent words <coughs> that climate change deniers cannot understand. But uh, this is the WAPO, uh, just <coughs> putting it in plain English, <coughs> what they're talking about. <coughs> surface temperatures during the heat wave in 2020 and I say I, I, I'm pretty sure again in 2021 soared to 10.8 degrees Fahrenheit above the 1979 to 2000 norms you know this word norms you can uh, kick that one uh, out the door in the long stripes you know, these 375 mile long, miles wide areas, there is hardly any soil and vegetation is scarce. So the limestone crops out of the surface as the rock formations warm up, cracks and pockets opened up, releasing methane that had been had been trapped inside, you know, probably uh, for millennia. The concentrations of methane were elevated by about 5% five per, five Frotzheim said. Further tests showed the continued concentration of methane throughout the spring of 2021 despite the return of low temperatures and snow in the region. Quote, quoting uh, geologist Frotzheim, quote, we would have expected elevated methane in areas with wetlands, but these were not over wetlands, <clears throat> but on limestone outcrops. There is little, there is very little soil in these. It was really a surprising signal from hard rock, not wetlands, close quote. The carbonates in the outcroppings date back 541 million years, 541 million years to the Paleozoic area, era, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. This is Max Holm, a senior scientist at the Woodwell Climate Research Center. Quote, it is intriguing, it is not good news, if it's right, nobody wants to see more potentially nasty feedbacks, and this is potentially one, do you think so, um, continuing with uh, Robert Holmes, what we do know with quite a lot of confidence is how much carbon is locked up in the permafrost. It's a big number and as the earth warms and permafrost thaws that ancient organic matter is available to microbes for microbial processes that release CO2 and methane. If something in the Arctic is going to keep me up at night, that is still what it is, close quote, saying the paper warrants further study. Do you think so? The geologists who wrote the report usually study things such as tectonic plate boundaries and the way those geologic plates fold over one another but they have worked in the Arctic and that has piqued their interest. 
the biggest source sources of methane in the world, well, as of right now, supposedly, supposedly as of right now, the biggest sources of methane in the world are agricultural, such as rice growing and leaks and flares from oil and gas operations, such as in the U.S. Permian Basin in Texas and now New Mexico, where production has soared in the past decade. But Frotsam said that in the permafrost, quote, the question is, how much will come? And we don't really know. Yes, we don't really know how much methane bomb will explode in the permafrost. <clears throat> normally, normally, there's that word again, normally, you know, for the past 541 million years, or at least for the past, what, uh, 20,000 years, normally <clears throat> the frozen permafrost, now the thawing temper frost, acts as a cap, sealing methane below. It also can lock up gas hydrates, which are crystalline solids of frozen water that contain huge amounts of methane. Unstable at normal sea level pressure and temperatures, gas hydrates can be dangerously explosive as temperatures rise. The study said that the gas hydrates in the Earth's permafrost are estimated to contain 20 gigatons of carbon. That is a small percentage of all of the carbon trapped in the permafrost, but the continued warming of gas hydrates could cause disruptive and rapid release of methane from rock outcroppings. This is Ted Schur, professor of ecosystems ecology at Northern Arizona University. Quote, <clears throat> it will be important to continue to compare methane in future years to really pinpoint how much additional geologic methane is being emitted into the atmosphere as the permafrost thaws. We know the heat wave was real. And again, we know the one this uh, year is real. But whether that triggered the methane release cannot be determined without additional years of methane data. So yeah, so uh, book hermit, you can go back to sleep. The Arctic has also delivered other sobering news. Polar Portal, a website where Danish Arctic research institu institutions present updated information about ice, said last week that a massive melting event had been big enough to cover Florida with two inches of water. I could swear I remember reporting that story as four inches of water uh, over Florida. Yes, and this article was written by Stephen Moffson, who covers biz the business of climate change for the Washington Post. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, guys, now that we have uh, confirmed that the methane bomb is worse than previously thought, the little dog and I are going to head over to the garden on this spectacularly gorgeous day and see if we can find some ripe tomatoes. And I suggest you get out there and uh, harvest all of the ripe tomatoes out of your garden while you still can. Bye, guys.